14 years ago, we got this masterpiece. Gentlemen. Released in 2009, Meet the Spy is one of Valve's classic animations where we get to learn all about one of our favorite mercenaries. This animation pretty much defined the character of the spy and how we still view him to this day, the sneaky, snobby Frenchman. But what if I told you Valve's original vision might have been entirely different from the version we got and it could have completely altered how we view the spy today? I never even saw the lines of any other character. There weren't, there weren't lines interspersed with other characters at all. Context time. There are 10 Meet the Team videos from 2007 to 2012, most of which are the mercenaries performing some kind of monologue. I am heavy weapons guy. Do you even know who you're talking to? I'm an engineer. I'm a black Scottish cyclops. Sniper's a good job, mate. That is until 2009, where the animation started featuring dialogue from other characters and became more narrative driven. Did anyone happen to kill a red spy on the way here? Could you hold your hip cage open a bit? But that thing... It scares me. This might have seemed like an obvious way to explore more of the TF2 world, but what if I told you this was not originally the plan? <laughs> Medic! When you're a field mm. medic, doing no harm mm. is not the issue. Hmm? In fact, I often- What you just saw is a video called Meet the Medic Outtakes, uploaded by a Valve dev and dubbed by Robin Atkin Downs. It's an early version of Meet the Medic featuring a monologue just like the others. According to Valve, the Meet the Team videos were all based on the voice actors' audition scripts, which makes sense for all the monologues, but then why is there no monologue out there for the spy? But what if I told you there is? And after 14 years, it's been found. Do you like video games with law? I mean, look at the video you're watching right now, of course you do. Well, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Honkai Impact 3rd. The 7.2 patch just came out, which is the last version before part 2, which is really exciting. The game has some really cool story and law. It's about this evil energy consuming the world and you have to fight against its many manifestations. You play as a mantis. No, not that kind. A massively augmented Neotech integrated soldier. Like Fuhu. An awesome grandmaster of martial arts who has just gotten the new Biofire battle suit, which gives her pyro abilities, a pair of wings, and immortality so she can't die during a battle and can consume her own HP to boost her damage. There's lots of cool characters like Coralie and Helia who's showing up in the story, although they're from part 2. There's also limited time events like the pinball game side story, overall just really cool things. It's an awesome game with lots of characters and outfits, and if you're a new player, you can get the Hershers of Finality and Rebirth. They're the most powerful characters in game and will definitely help you prepare for part 2. Download Honkai Impact 3rd and use code KFPHOENIX for lots of rewards and bonuses. Thank you to Honkai Impact for supporting the channel and projects, go check it out in the description. Now let's get back to the video. One year ago, I was interviewing Dennis Bateman for a video I wanted to make about his career, where at one point we started talking about his audition for The Spy, where he told me some really cool things. It's been well over 10 years um, that I first auditioned for the roles of Spy and Pyro. Actually, I think I auditioned online, actually. I did my voiceover audition for that online. And I was, uh, I was booked, I guess, through that and then went down to record the of the early, early dialogue for the game. We got to use a lot of uh, improvisation and creativity in the auditions and even a bit in the, um, in the game itself. I remember throwing in a few lines of my own that they liked, so uh, he didn't have to be any particular nationality. So I tried various nationalities. I, I, there might have been a spy who was a Brit. There might have been a spy who was a, a Spaniard or an Italian or a German. I think I tried all of those, but it wasn't until I um, hit on the Frenchman uh, that they, they said that's the one we want, so the rest is history. Dennis wanted to find his audition tapes and send them to me for my video, but was unsuccessful. However, he was able to retrieve his first ever studio recording at Valve, 
So he sent me this. At that time, I was super busy with some other projects, and when I finally had time to listen to it, I assumed it would just be some alternative versions of the classic lines we have today. So, um, if I if I bobble something, then I should just pick it up. And in the beginning, you can actually hear him talk to the Valve guy about Spy, which is really cool. I remember really enjoying this uh, this audition, frankly. I thought I thought it was well, you know, it's. It, <laughs> it was, yeah, it's well written, you know, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's very, uh, it is very erudite. I mean, this is an intelligent guy. But then... Ours is a mean, dark old world, where some say, a man can be whatever he's man enough to be. I'm here to tell you that there are limits. Oh. My. God. It took me some time to realize, but I couldn't believe what had just been revealed. It lines up perfectly with something that could have been in the original audition script, and honestly, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't stop thinking about this alternative version of Meet the Spy, and what it might have looked like if they went with this version. So I decided to gather a small team and bring this into reality. First, I worked with the talented Alternate, where we talked about what it might have looked like and then we storyboarded our vision. Yes, I know, I'm an artist. We went with the idea of Red Spy giving his team a pep talk in the intelligence room after a loss, so it kinda looked like Meet the Spy. And then Alternate would go off to start recording reference footage and start animating. The amazing Polybrow would then join us and work with us on a score for the shot, and it's a banger. And after many months, our vision of how Meet the Spy could have looked like was finally complete. Enjoy. Ours is a mean, dark old world, where some say, a man can be whatever he's man enough to be. I'm here to tell you that there are limits. Oh, I've no doubt that your hometown bars, alleys, churches, and whorehouses are safer tonight for your absence. <laughs> Alone, any of you bad men could be the Caesar of his local sewer. So what? Your individual strengths, speed, accuracy, brawn, brain, rage, flame retardancy, are matched by weaknesses we need not detain. Disorder, the natural state of nature, is cheap to create, costly to overcome. But you put pain to that debt. Nature abhors a team, gentlemen. And together, we bold few, we unnatural brothers, are going to seize Mother Nature by the throat and choke the whole world out of that sorry bitch. Now, of course, I'd imagine there would be an intro scene, plus some extra scenes slash shots in the monologue, but nonetheless, I think it's very cool to see Spy bringing everybody's spirit up like this. And I did not expect to hear Spy saying whorehouses or bitch. But to be honest, we have this in the original. And now he's here to f us! So that's not that big of a surprise. Please go check out the animation and score on their own on Ultra and Polly's channels. If we had gotten this version of Meet the Spy, I think we would look at Spy very differently. Spy seems to actually respect his team and care for them, and is like an actual leader, not just a guy that has to take that role who thinks he's above everybody else. Now why did they not go with this version? Well, it's pretty obvious honestly. First of all, they wanted to explore more narrative driven stories. And just like the cut version of Meet the Medic, it doesn't really relate to the gameplay of the character. We'd made a fundamental error in judgment. Did we explain the birth of the Metagon? Sort of. Did anyone really want the Metagon explained? Not necessarily. Playtesting made us realize that we'd invested a huge amount of screen time on the nuts and bolts of the birth of an inanimate object when we should have been focusing on our star. We scrapped the origin story of the Metagon and went back to basics. When people think of the Medic, what do they think of? What's the iconic image? The Medic, ubercharging a heavy. 
Valve is very good at perfectly balancing gameplay and character so that we both fall in love with the character but also really want to play as them. Like, which would you rather play as? Wait, what? He was a spy all along? He can disguise himself as others? Aww. Uh, wow, this guy is, a uh, pretty wise. That's why they decided to just stick with the basics of Spy's personality and do the big twist at the end, which is just amazing because it's the only Meet the Team video about the blue team, but it's actually about the red team because it shows how Spy can infiltrate the enemy and it just perfectly shows the Spy's character both in-game and law-wise. And they chose to reserve Spy's moment as an inspiring authority figure for other media like Expiration Date. Because Spy's speech in that is very similar, and I'm pretty certain this is the inspiration for that. We have 70 hours to live. For most men, no time at all. We are not most men. We are mercenaries. We have the resources, the will, to make these hours count. Honestly, it makes me so happy to know how fleshed out the characters were from day one which is insane for a 16 year old game about eating sandwiches and stealing suitcases. But it's also what makes it so timeless. You know the team loved working on the game and its characters, and they also had a lot of fun with it. You can even hear the Valve guy tell Dennis to have fun with it and make it his own, which he did. When uh, we got down there and met the folks from Valve and saw the scripts, that's when I started to think this is really something different, you know, this is special. It was, it was kind of like the golden age of, of uh, early video games there, and I think the TF2 was one of the ones that was very forward-thinking. This has brought us such amazing and iconic characters that have inspired countless fan creations, and even Valve had so much more planned for it. There's multiple scrapped animations such as a little animation of Medic hitting one of Spy's cigarettes mid-air and pinning it to the wall, an animation of a Spy being outed and hunted by a Medic, then falling into Demoman's Stiggy Trap. Silly stuff like that. But then there's also Scout being chased by an army of soldiers and being saved by the Medic in a fucking helicopter who steals a soldier's rocket launcher and uses it on them? What? This would've gone so hard. Tobinator has an iceberg video on this and I think you should go check it out. There's of course also the infamous scrapped adult swim show, where we only got expiration date that was supposed to serve as a pilot. The Meet the Team videos made us want to be a one man army as the heavy, place the perfect sticky trap as demo man, completely fool the enemy team as the spy. We saw something on the screen and said wow, I wanna do that, and we did. This perfect balance, yin and yang between gameplay and character, is what truly makes Team Fortress 2 a timeless masterpiece. I mean classic. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a huge project for me and my friends and I hope you all enjoyed. In this outro, I'm gonna tackle a few topics that I wanna get out of the way. First of all is that this is, you know, a theory. But a lot of things point towards this being like a, a beta scrapped version of Meet the Spy. Valve have also specifically pointed out that Meet the Heavy is almost line for line from the audition script. Which means, you know, the others probably aren't and are altered. And I think you can tell by, you know, the upload date, like the early ones are probably way more similar to the original audition script. And it is very clear that once they had established what the Meet the Team videos were, they were not gonna go with the spy monologue. And I just wanna make sure everybody knows, I never thought that they intended Tended to go with this once Meet the Team had been established. It's not like they all of a sudden just wanted to change narrative, it's kind of because they needed to, and I think it made it so much better. Same with Meet the Medic, and also I want to bring up that the monologue is pretty evident that it's not the one from the audition script, or oh, it's a re-recording. Because again, the version we have with Robin's voice is redubbed over the Valve one. It could have been that, you know, the Valve people made their own voice from his audition script, but because it was paced wrong, they had to, you know, redo it themselves before they then got Robin to do it. But it's it's convoluted, so it might, might not be, you know. But what we do know is that there are original audition scripts out there, and imagine if we could see them. I think that would be so exciting. Because rather than being completely different, we would actually see like an alternative version where they say different stuff. They might say something very offensive and out there, I don't know. I mean, a Spy says whorehouses and bitch in his monologue, so I, I don't know. But 
I would be so excited to see that if we could. And also I really want to thank Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring the video. They're the reason I can make my big project. In less than a month I'm flying to America to shoot Meet the Real Sniper and some other cool things and I'm very very excited. I reinvest pretty much everything I make from YouTube into these big videos. I might not be financially smart but I'm a filmmaker at heart alright so I've already invested thousands of dollars into Meet the Real Sniper and thousands more will go into it. I hope you guys are excited. I hope I don't go broke this time. And being able to make a living off this now means the world to me. So I want to thank all of you guys. You know I do all the writing, the storyboarding and of course the editing which is one of my favorite things. But what I do not do is the animation and music. And that's why I want to give a huge shout out to Alternade and Polly Brown. Please go check them out. We've worked together on other stuff like we work on charity, the recent TF Connect charity event, and they're just great. And of course, huge thanks to my Patreons who helped me fund thumbnails and stuff for other videos, and that means a lot to me. Um, I guess subscribe if you like the video. <laughs> um, we're almost at 300,000 subscribers, which is insane. Thank you all. But other than that, have a great day. Bye bye. And of course, huge shout out and thank you to Dennis Bateman, the best spy in the world. I love him. <laughs>